Our musical guest tonight is right here from Denver. The band The Wannabes are an alternative rock group who, although they're young, they're making a big name for themselves. So here with me tonight are The Wannabes. Hello, guys. Hello. Hey. How are you? Great. Good. How are you? Good. So I just, I think it's so cool. Like, you guys are pretty young for a band, and I've already started and doing stuff. So will you just uh, say how old you are and kind of how you guys got together? Yeah. yeah. I'm 19. I go to, yeah, like, CU Denver. Um, yeah, uh, I met Cameron over a Craigslist ad. <laughs> like my dad told me um, one day, he's like, are you ever gonna do anything with the music stuff? And so they made me get on Craigslist mm -hmm. and just look for people. And I found someone who had like the same influences and like style as me. Really cool. And we met up and it was just kind of connected after that. Uh, uh, I'm Cameron, I'm 18. Uh, and then yeah, we met on Craigslist and then Joe yeah. and I met in detention. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm 16. I go to Parker Lutheran High School with him. I'm only a sophomore, but yeah, we met in detention and talked and stuff. He found out that I played bass and one thing led to another. It just happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I ask what you guys were in detention for? You don't have to share. <laughs> I'm just curious. What? I mean, what was the catalyst that led to this? Uh, mine was ditching class. Uh. <laughs> mine was, uh. I had a uh, 27 unexcused absences oh. in each class. <laughs> 27 unexcused absences? Yeah. And they only give you detention for that? Yeah, I don't know why, I'd be but on. they're really lax with him. I for guess some so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, you guys can be like, yeah, we were skipping class to work on the band. Yeah. 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 Just tell people exactly. that. When you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll look back on it one day and be like, we created that right. by putting them into detention exactly. together. Yeah. 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 They're going to try and take credit for it. Uh, <laughs> stop them. You're like, no, it was all us. Yeah. Uh, so talk more about your music. What kind of style is it? It's like uh, alternative rock and like, uh, like right now the songs we're playing is like kind of like has like a little bit of like grunge or like mm -hmm. punk in it. Um, yeah. But we want to like do kind of something different with each album. Like every yeah. album's like rock, but like do you have like a, uh, I don't know, like a different thing with each yeah. one? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, like a lot of like punk influence. I mean, we have a lot of like heavy like 90s, like grunge alternative influence and a lot of like the punk stuff. So like the Green Day like yeah. type stuff like that, you know, even some like Fall Out Boy, some of that more modern yeah. stuff. But we just want to, we like to take like the older styles because mm -hmm. you have to pay tribute to the past, exactly. you know? Um, and then put it into something new that we can like make our own, yeah. you know. What kind of yeah. drew you guys to punk in the first place versus like anything else? Uh, um, uh, um, I mean, that's just kind of the music I've always liked. It's yeah. just got like that rebellious vibe to it almost. And, like uh, a long time ago, I was listening to music and it was like American Idiot, yeah. like Green Day and stuff like that. And I just listen to it and I'm like, I want to be able to, to play that and do that and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't really listen to music until like <laughs> <laughs> my freshman year of high school. I listened to like country and pop before I'm it, so but sorry. I wasn't super into it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But then uh, I heard, I, I was like listening to the radio then like, that was back when like, like Fall Out Boy and like Imagine Dragons were first getting on yeah. the radio for like their new stuff. I got into that, and then I got into all the older yeah. rock. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could have that feeling of like not hearing that music, and yeah. then just all of a sudden, like that must be a cool experience. Yeah. Of, like, yeah. Oh my god, I've been listening to this all my life while this was out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, are you guys playing any shows coming up? Um, we don't have any like coming up right at the mm -hmm. moment. I mean, we had a few good ones. Yeah. We played Herman's Hideaway last night, yeah, yeah. so that was big for us. But yeah. we're looking at getting some stuff upcoming yeah. soon, some bigger yeah. venues. And what's it like playing at a live venue? Uh, I think we all kind of, I think we all feel good about it. But yeah. there's, I think we all have different opinions. I mean, for me, I love it. I like. There's, it's weird that being on stage in front of like people it's like one of my most comfortable like elements like i don't know for me i just love it yeah. so I, I used to hate it i didn't <laughs> like getting on stage but then like it's it's growing on me i guess yeah but. like i like it it's really fun and it's like really cool to be able to be on a stage yeah. and make sure. stuff for people and just be able to share that yeah, yeah. just good to be up there make art make things that people sure. yeah. Yeah. enjoy uh why didn't you like it at first was it just nerve-wracking uh it was more like 
I don't know, like I didn't, it was hot up there. <laughs> and like, <laughs> there's, I don't like live performances, yeah. it's really hot. The yeah. Really <laughs> yeah, the lights are shining in my eyes. I'm yeah. like, yeah. One day you mean that, like, I just need a fan. I need mean, like someone yeah, to just yeah. me during yeah. the live performances. <laughs> Wind blown. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what's kind of the plan going forward? Like what do you guys want to do as a band? What's the future for you guys? Uh, we have uh, an album coming out hopefully here soon. We are heading in the studio today, actually, to do vocals for yeah. like three more songs. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. And Thanks then so. we've got a tour coming up in the summer. Um, when, like, beginning of July? Yeah, July. starting yes. in, like, July 1st. Yeah. 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 So. What's it like, I just have to, because, like I said before, you guys are all so young, and I feel like some bands don't kind of start touring and doing albums yeah. until they are a little bit older, you know? So yeah. what's it like kind of getting this level of success and starting at this age uh it's like i don't know i feel like we just kind of wanted to get a head start you know because yeah, we are yeah. like kind of young so i feel like it's really cool yeah. to be like in class and just be like yeah sorry i gotta leave i've got a tv interview yeah. like <laughs> yeah. and just to be yeah. able to be able to do all this like at our age yeah. is it's awesome it's an awesome experience are you missing class to be here right now uh, thankfully, he was hoping on it. Yeah, but. I was <laughs> hoping so I could brag, but we didn't have school today. Oh, I was gonna say if I'm up since 28th, I'm gonna be very honored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I mean, it's just cool, you know. May as well do it when you're young, right. you know. It's yeah. awesome to yeah. be able to do this because you never know where it's gonna go, exactly. you know. So. Yeah. And it seems like you guys all really get along well together yeah. based on a Craigslist ad intention. Like, yeah. you know, just yeah, for sure. it all kind of yeah. fell together. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. We're excited to hear you yeah. perform. Thank you so yeah. much for yeah. having yeah. us. Perfect. It means a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Our next segment is back by popular demand. So let's just get right to it. Check out a new episode of Uncomfortable Questions. Maybe you guys want to answer a few questions for us? Nah. Man, you guys look like you uh, could be famous though. You like a whole crew. Alright. You got it. I'm gonna remember that though. This could be your big chance. This is a scenario, it's pretty rough. Okay. You have to eat somebody. You're starving. What party are you starting with? If I were to eat a person. Yeah. The thighs. A lot of good meat there. It's the meatiest part. Yeah. It'd be pretty good. Yeah. Probably if, tasty too. You think how when we go to the Renaissance Fest, we eat a turkey leg? How exactly. meaty and juicy those are. <laughs> man, just a human leg, especially like a leg like this, man. Yeah. You're. Man, that's oh man. Flavor City. That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Absolutely. Wow. Um, wow, this is way. I, you weren't expecting to field this kind of question today, were you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I could do it at all. I think I would die. Yeah? Yeah, I think I would die. Okay, all right. Well, I don't know much about butchery. I guess uh, maybe the, the like the thighs? Yeah. The buttocks? I'm not 100% yeah. sure, but I think that's where you'd get the most useful uh, meat. Whatever has the most meat on it. Probably the stomach. Stomach? All right. Uh, Probably the fingers. The fingers? Yeah. There's like no meat in there. But they're nice and small. It's like an appetizer, you know, chicken fries. That's finger food. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I'm probably starting with the abdomen. You know? Abdomen? Yeah. What, is there any reason behind that? No, it just seems softer than the other yeah. parts. You just want to eat what they ate? Yeah. When did you decide to give up on your childhood dreams? Oh. <laughs> Ouch. I did not, actually. You're still going for no, it? No, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I never really had like big dreams as a child, so I guess <laughs> my dreams now are my childhood dreams. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I really had a childhood dream, to be honest. You just didn't even dream. I didn't dream. You set the bar low, you know, you can't be disappointed. Yeah. 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 When I became an adult, <laughs> when I realized it wasn't logical. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. My childhood dreams were, I'd say probably being an engineer. You dreamed of it being an engineer as a child? <laughs> well. <laughs> probably like 17, I guess, high school. Yeah? What yeah. were they? I like to be a comedian, I guess. Yeah? Yeah. Why'd you give up, man? I don't know, just like college is getting close. Like my dad's like being a cow and be something like, you know, okay. that's like actually, you know, sustainable. Yeah. When's the last time you, um, you know? Uh, <laughs> last week, actually. All right, <laughs> yeah. nice. Yesterday. All right. Yeah. 
Yay to sexual health. Yeah. When was the last time you, uh, you know. Ariga! Uh, the last time I was on my bike. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> she really gets me going. <laughs> no, you, uh, you know. I have no clue what that is. All right. <laughs> last time you, uh, you know. <laughs> really? Hey, you can pass. You can pass. I'm passing this. <laughs> well, you see, that's yeah, a very I... funny question. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were actually, that's where we go, we're going, actually. Oh, you're on your, <laughs> yeah, on your way there. We All right. Well, don't let me oh, yeah. keep you guys up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, when's the last time you, uh, you know? No. Uh, let's see. A mm, couple months. All right. I actually haven't. Not at all. Not once. No way. Nope. Not lying. You're not pulling our leg. Nope. All right. Well, hey. So, so, so I'm yeah. That girl. Hey. Uh, I'm looking today. <laughs> so. no, I'm on board. Three high. There we go. My next guests tonight are from all over the country, but they are here tonight in Denver to talk about Lone Tree Arts Center's production of Fences. So please welcome the cast of Fences from Lone Tree Arts Center. Hi guys, how are you? Hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Uh, will you guys just start by introducing yourselves and kind of who you play in the show? Well, all right. Uh, my name is Leonard Earl Howes, and I play Bono. And my name is Esau Pritchett, and I play Troy Maxson. We are best friends in the show. Best friends. And I am Jalan Shahada Hill, and I play Rose. This is my man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so just take a quick minute and talk about Fences, because there might still be some people that don't know about it, even though it's you know, a beautiful piece of work and you know, turned into a movie a couple years ago, but just kind of sure. talk about what is Fences. Yeah. You want to leave us off, Leonard? Uh, <laughs> fences. Uh, written by August Wilson, mm -hmm. um, one of our only great uh, African-American playwrights um, of this century. Um, and it is, uh, it is a play that is part of his cycle of plays that he wrote uh, kind of chronicling, I want to say, mm -hmm. early 1900s. Mm -hmm. Well, 20th century. 20th yeah. century, yeah. yeah, throughout. Uh, and Fences takes place in, we open up in 57, mm -hmm. and it spans through 1965. Um, I'll tag you in. Yeah. <laughs> it's just essentially a, a story about a, a family, an urban family in, in Pittsburgh. And I played Troy Max, and Troy Max is a um, an ex player for the Negro Baseball League. Mm -hmm. And the lore is is that my character was so good that if he had had an opportunity at that time, he could have been a major league baseball player. But as it turns out, because of the uh, the uh, social aspects of the time, he was unable to. Um, and it's really a drama surrounding him and his family. Um, we talk about a, a lot about the confinement of these particular characters, these black. Uh, folks in America at that time. Um, some of the dreams deferred, sure. you know, as Langston Hughes would put it. Um, but it's really just basically a, an American family yeah. drama, yeah. essentially. Yeah. 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 It's kind of hard to describe. There's so much that happens in the show. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like it, to get to do a show like this? That is hard to describe because it's yeah. so impactful <clears throat> and so emotional. Julian, uh, uh, well, um, well, it's fun. I'll start with that and a lot of hard work. <laughs> but it's a lot of learning because it takes place, you know, in these 10 years and there's so many things that happen in America during that time mm -hmm. that are, you know, and the culturally specific things that go on with these, this black family. So uh, I, I find the, it's learning, yeah. learning, yeah. learning, learning, you know, which is really great to dig into the history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything you guys want to add about what's just like doing this show? Especially after, you know, just coming off a lot of Oscar wins with uh, yeah. uh, movie production of it. What's it like kind of getting to play these characters? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, man. I, I have to be honest, I have not seen the film. Okay. Um, I, for my money, August Wilson is a brilliant American playwright. Play yeah. And, you know, I understand the convention of taking that right. this play and turning it into a screenplay. Uh, it definitely gives it a, a higher profile for more people to see. Mm -hmm. But kind of coming from the theater and to have an experience you know, the fences and many different plays. For me, it's just a different kind of animal yeah. when you're a live performance. Mm -hmm. You breathe in the same air, you're, mm -hmm. you're sharing the same energy. So even those folks who may have seen the film version of it, I would challenge their sensibilities and tell them that even if they've seen the film version, 
they've not seen the play. Yeah. And even though it's the same thing, it isn't. It's, you know, this communal experience that we have in the theater yeah. is something that is yeah. uh, unique yeah. um, to, to what it is that we do. Yeah, yeah. I, there's nothing like live theater, yeah. you know. Um, just as we are sitting here filming, someone will watch it, but the folks that are here in the room are getting mm -hmm. another experience being here with us. And, and that's what you receive. Um, and then the design that we have mm -hmm. um, by our, our senior designer, Ed Haynes, mm -hmm. Hayes. Um, I think I'm pronouncing his last name wrong, but the set. It was called Man. <laughs> yeah. The set that they've designed and to bring you into this world um, is magnificent. Mm -hmm. You know. What what do you what would you guys say makes August Wilson such a great playwright? What are some of those elements that just attracts you to him? I would say for me, um, Language. Yeah, <laughs> language. One of my markers for it, a really good a writer in general, especially as an actor, is that if I am able to uh, to get into the script and the words come out of my mouth and they come out quite naturally, it's not mm -hmm. something I have to finesse, then I recognize that this particular writer or playwright understands the world that he or she is writing about. And it's clear that August understands this world. Yeah, yeah. And because I'm, you know, a little bit close to it myself, uh, some of these folks, some of these characters in this play, I know these people. These mm -hmm. are people from home. These are some people in the family. Yeah. And you recognize immediately that August was around these folks and he knew them very well. Um, so it, from that standpoint, it makes it fairly easy mm -hmm. because you don't, once again, you don't have to work on finessing or, or creating uh, something that, that has great depth yeah. because it's already it's there. It's there, all this yeah. extra subtext, mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah, there. It's yeah, there. it's there. And everything is deliberate and on purpose, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yes. And, and he, within him writing about the black culture experience, he's also writing about the human experience. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and that's why we encourage folks to come because it, it transcends. Mm -hmm. So even though you're, you are getting a peek into the life in that way, you also, there's also things that you relate to um, just as a human being. Yeah. I want to talk about you guys for a minute, uh, you know, as the actors. I think you all have some pretty amazing credits uh, on your resumes before coming. L L Leonard, let's start with you. You're on Kevin Can Wait. Yes. Correct? So talk about the experience doing that show um, and doing TV versus. Well, you know, uh, working is a blessing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, Amen. and getting to work with uh, someone with the talent of, of Kevin James, who's, who's our lead there is awesome yeah. uh, we have a great time it's a fun set yeah and you know bringing just some light-hearted comedy uh into people's homes these days uh so yeah i play i play goody good He's a good friend yeah very cool and then isa you won a drama desk award in la a couple years ago correct um i was nominated nominated for, yeah yeah just recently yeah uh talk about that role a little bit more and what that was for yeah this was august wilson again this was king yeah. headley um and like leonard talked about before August essentially wrote what we call the century cycle, and he wrote a, a play that for him represented, in a general way, uh, the black experience for each decade of the 20th century. So this one was set in the early 80s. I played a character, King Headley, um, troubled young man um, who had served, I think, uh, like seven years in prison yeah. for uh, kind of a crime that he committed, but he, in that culture he kind of had to because if he didn't, his life was in danger. Yeah. So again, it was a, a really, really heavy piece. Unlike Leonard here, I don't get cast too much in the lighthearted comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but uh, uh, yeah. But um, yeah, I was lucky enough, man. We had a really good production out in LA. It was my first time working there. I'm, you know, I'm based in New York yeah. and um, really, really proud of that show. We were nominated, I was nominated for uh, Best Lead. Um, we had um, Ella Joyce who was nominated for uh, best Supporting, uh, Best Ensemble, yeah. and um, Best Scenic Design. Yeah, so we didn't walk away with any awards, but <laughs> we were all nominated. It was an Not honor much. to be nominated. Yeah. And then, Yulon, uh, you were on Barbershop 2, if oh. I'm not mistaken. I was on Barbershop yeah. 2. <laughs> with uh, this guy. <laughs> you guys are back together again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a long yeah. journey, yeah. he and I. Yeah. Very cool. Since. What was that experience like, getting to be it was great, yeah. you know, you're on a set with your best friend, it's a yeah. fun time, everybody, it's lighthearted and funny, <laughs> and you know, so it's a good time. I mean, you know, 
It's always good to be working, as Amen. Leonard yeah. would say. You yeah. know, but I love the theater. Mm -hmm. Now they're telling me to wrap up, but I can't let you guys go before I ask this question because I feel like it's so timely. Mm. Of just this piece, I feel like it's such a strong piece in our current political climate. Sure. Uh, what is it like getting to perform this piece now and mm. kind of show these stories? in today's age, which I would argue is different than when it was written. Sure. You know, although it's still a modern piece, you know, it feels different now, I would yeah. say. So what's that like to get to do it today? I mean, I think it's the most important part of what we are able to do and we can do as artists. Yep. Um, just like you talked about, the kind of strained political atmosphere that we're in, um, for us to be able to get up and tell this particular story about this just, you know, not very unique American family, just a, a uh, the experience of this singular American family. Um, and the thing I love about it is that it's not sanitized in some degree where everybody's supposed to be perfect and we're trying yeah. to sell you some kind yeah. of um, utopia situation. No, we're dealing with real human beings. Yeah. Yeah. All of they, these characters yeah. are beautifully flawed. Beautifully, beautifully flawed. <laughs> yeah. way to, great way to put it, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys all for coming down today. You're welcome. We can't wait thank to see you. Fences. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, yeah thank you. Well, before we go, Oh no. <laughs> Lone Tree Art Center. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> April 4th through April the 21st. April 4th through the 21st. Yeah. Yep. Love Come to have check you us come out. out. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Be sure to check out Fences at Lone Tree Arts Center uh, playing April 4th. And stick around for our interview with Mark Stevens coming up next. Gyms, brother. Discover a whole new world at Aladdin, the hit Broadway musical. USA Today calls it pure genius. It delivers a rush that will surprise you. The New York Times calls it fabulous and extravagant and exactly what you wish for. Aladdin. Plays the Buell Theater April 7th through the 28th. Tickets at denvercenter.org or call 303-893-4100. At Metropolitan State University at Denver, our mission is to provide high-quality, accessible education that prepares our students for successful careers, postgraduate education, and lifelong learning in a global and technological society. Our values of diversity, access, and community help us provide opportunities for our students from all over the globe. In fact, We've just been named a Diversity Champion by Insight into Diversity Magazine for 2016. Because at MSU Denver, we believe in transforming lives. Met Radio on MyMetMedia.com The Met Report has the latest on volleyball, men's and women's soccer, and so much more. Tune in every Friday at 12.30 on Comcast Channel 58 and Campus Channel 20. Welcome back. My next guest tonight is a local author and Denver Post best-selling author. We talked to him before about his work, but today he's here to talk about someone else's work. So please welcome Mark Stevens. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming back on. You bet. <coughs> yeah. My pleasure. So like I said, you know, you're an author and you've written stuff and we've talked about that before, but today we're not here to talk about your work necessarily, um, about someone else's. So tell me about that. Glad to. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, um, Gary Riley mm -hmm. is who we're here to talk about, uh, a mentor to my, to, to my writing, uh, a tremendous friend, uh, somebody I met in about 2004, and um, we would meet for coffee. He, I mean, he was an amazing writer, um, unpublished, and he, I would show up and bring him a few things I'd written, and yeah. he'd, he'd show up, and every time we'd 
trade manuscripts, he had more and more novels that were just coming at me. Okay. Turned out he had written 25 complete, oh beautiful books um, in a variety of styles. Um, but he was a bit of a recluse. He was a bit of a quiet guy. Very, very friendly, very, very open. Could have a long, long conversations with him, but it was kind of in a small setting. He didn't like the big group scene. Yeah. Unfortunately, Gary passed away in 2011. In 2012, my friend Mike Keefe and I started uh, publishing Gary's works. Mike was also a, a much longer time friend of Gary's than mine. And we just looked at each other, Mike and I, and said we would just feel like our lives were somehow failures if we didn't bring Gary's works to light. So we started publishing Gary's books in 2012. And this coming week, we are going to publish book number 12. Um, out of all those books. So we're nearing the halfway mark. Yeah. And uh, we are encouraged by all the reviews and success yeah. so far. Talk about, because I bet it's just a sense, you know, just a, such a good feeling of you were able to read all of these while he was still here and talk with him about it and now get to share those with the world and see other people embracing them. So what's that feeling like to get to know that you got to pass these on kind of? It's, it's unbelievably bittersweet. Yeah. It is unbelievably bittersweet because it's so good to feel kind of validated by the fact that Mike and I both, we just said, did you read that book? It was so good. And we'd have these long conversations with each other. We'd talk with Gary about it. Um, we just, as humans, as readers, as enthusiasts of fiction, we got so much, yeah. so much out of reading those books. Then to put them out into the world and see National Public Radio rave about the books, to see three of these become finalists for the Colorado Book Award. Yeah. Denver Post has raved, uh, Master Wordsmith. We've gotten terrific reviews from uh, Booklist, uh, which is a major national advance um, uh, site where you go to get reviews ahead of publication. Um, terrific advance blurbs from literary lions like Stuart O'Nan and Ron Carlson. And in the case of the book we're publishing this week, uh, actually April 6th, next week, um, The Circumstantial Man, terrific advance reviews from a guy like Jeffrey Deaver, who's sold 50 million books and read this book and just knocked his socks off. Yeah. And talk about his kind of writing. What genre is it? What can people expect? You know, obviously not every book is going to be the same, but kind of what was that style he had? Well, in fact, he wrote in a whole bunch of styles. Mm -hmm. To date, what we've published are really in three styles. So the first of the eight series in The Asphalt Warrior um, series, which is based on Gary's life as a taxi driver in Denver. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a very humorous, funny yeah. series. Um, the, Gary's main character, a guy named Brendan Murphy, had two goals in life. One was to earn as little money as possible, mm -hmm. and the other goal was to never, under any circumstances, get involved in the uh, lives of his passengers. Mm -hmm. And he's always getting tangled up in the lives of his passengers and doing the right thing. Um, so there's eight books out in that series. Then there's a trilogy based on Gary's experiences before, during, and after the Vietnam War. Yeah. And um, so that's more of a literary style. Mm -hmm. The new book is suspense and sort of a noir crime thriller um, that is just amazing and really shows Gary's range. But then down the road are coming science fiction, some straight up American literary yeah. kind of works, um, some fantasy, some kind of creative um, experimental fiction too. Yeah. So. Guy wrote all over the all place. All over the place. And just you know, like you said, you had the opportunity to read these and kind of connect with these, and now you're letting other people do that. And yeah. I just think that's so cool that you're doing this. And what if Gary was still here, what do you think he would say of seeing all these people just embrace his work? Well, I'll never forget the opening night at uh, Tattered Cover when we launched that first book, and there were probably 150 people in the room at Tattered Cover. And Mike Keefe got up at the, uh, at the microphone at the podium and said, if Gary were here today, he wouldn't be here because he couldn't take, he, 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 just, he just couldn't deal with that kind of big setting, that crowd. I think Gary, frankly, would be overwhelmed by the response. I know he wanted some reaction. I yeah. know he wanted to get out there and get, it, get these things published, but he just couldn't quite get over that self-promotion gene, that, yeah. get, getting that networking side of him going to really make it happen. But I think he'd be I think he'd be thrilled. And I, I certainly hope so.
Well, I just, like I said, I think it's so cool that you're doing this and spreading these works to other people. Where can people uh, get copies of these books? Where are they these available? are available anywhere you look. Um, Amazon, of course, support your local um, independent bookstore. Mm -hmm. Tattered Cover will be a tattered cover for the launch um, on April 6th. Mm -hmm. And um, really, anywhere you go get books, they're all available on ebook. And we are working on our first audio book uh, for first this new one. So, cool. yeah. In April 6th, the next book launches this one. So be sure to check out uh, Stop by Tender Cover. Uh, and thank you so much, Mark, for coming on. And be sure to check out all of Gary Riley's uh, works. I just, like I said, I think this is so cool that you're doing this. And really just, I think this is amazing, you know, that you're taking your time when you could be working yourself to be doing this for Gary. We had to. Yeah. Well, perfect. Thank you so much Thanks, for coming Avery. on. Yeah. All right. Uh, and please welcome the Wannabes performing their original song. Red.
My next guests are all from the local theater company and Toto 2. Their next productions are two Colorado premiere, One Axe, The Way Station, and South Star. So please welcome the cast and creative team of Way Station and South Star. Hi guys, how are you? Hello. You're great. Yeah, Good. Uh, why don't you guys start by just introducing yourself and which show you're working on and kind of what role. So why don't we start at the end and work our way Sure. Uh, my name is Austin Lazak and I am in uh, The Way Station as a character named Tom and South Star as a character named Evan. Uh, my name's Kate Poling. I'm playing Daisy in Waystation and Estelle in South Star. I'm uh, Seth Palmer Harris. I am uh, Jack in the Waystation and Alex in South Star. Cool. And I'm Susan Lyles, and I am directing and producing. Very cool. Uh, so why don't we start with Susan? Just talk more about these two premieres. Uh, right there. Um, these are two one acts that are written by Rebecca Gorman O'Neill, who's a local Denver playwright. She's actually a professor here at Metro mm -hmm. State. Um, this makes our third main stage production with Rebecca, and um, she's been with us working since 2010 on her play crawl. It's one of our writers. So, so we're very excited. It's um, the plays are um, kind of sci-fi, Twilight Zoney. Mm -hmm. Um, morality plays, in a way. Okay. okay. So it's really, it's, it's, it's fun. Very cool. Uh, and why don't you guys talk more about your characters and kind of what your experience with the shows are? Sure. Uh, I mean, it's a really interesting thing to play two back to back characters written by the same yeah. um, playwright. And there's, you know, kind of a, a funny overlap between the two plays, um, but they're very different. Um, so in the first one, I play more of a genteel type guy, and the second one, I'm more predatory and kind of uh, gruff. Uh, so it's a great, uh, as an actor, it's a great uh, experience. Yeah, yeah in uh, The Way Station, I am a 17-year-old from the 1930s and kind of innocent, naive, um, and running from something, as all of the characters are in The Way Station. And then in South Star, I play Estelle, who is the leader of the rebels seven years into the second American Civil War. So she's tired. She's been at war for seven years. Kind of no innocence lost. And the innocence lost there. So interesting juxtaposition of characters yeah. for sure. Uh, and in The Way Station, my character is a, a gruff cowboy. Or is he? <laughs> and then in The South Star, <laughs> my character is a beaten resistance fighter. Or what is he? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Talk more about getting to do two one acts, like you said, back to back by the same author. Because I feel like as an actor, you kind of get in the author's head, the playwright's headspace um, with that particular play. But now you're doing two right back to back. So talk about that transition, kind of what you guys do in between. Well, yeah, what's been great is that she's been a part of it. She's come to our rehearsals. Um, she is local, so we mm -hmm. can pick her brain about the backstory <laughs> and mm -hmm. the choices that she made. Um, I've never done two one acts back to back, so it's it'll be really interesting to kind of switch that, you know, just right after, you know, intermission yeah. and, and go straight into the other one. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Right, we're still in rehearsals right now, so we haven't quite done them back to back yet, but um, it's going to be really fun. There's two different sets. Our set will open up um, to be the second set, and it's, it's interesting to do two totally different characters, not only from different plays, but also different time periods, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and working with the physicality with that, as well as just what kind of person would live in the 1930s versus, you know, the future, which I find really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, so, I, as an actor, I always love having a good gear shift in the middle of a show, you know, and um, whether it's switching characters or just switching uh, the energy in the feel of the show, whatever it happens to be, um, I just like the dynamism, dynamism of it. Um, and so having, you know, the opportunity to do two different shows back to back like that, and I mean, a very natural gear shift with two very different characters, or are they? <laughs> uh, they are. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, you know, because Rebecca wrote both of them, and she has a very kind of like consistent and mature writing style, mm -hmm. uh, there is a very nice common thread to both, you know, like a, a nice similarity in the rhythm and the flow. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's been a joy just working with all of these yeah. lovely words. And Susan, talk about as a director, doing two pieces and talk about what that is like staging and kind of what you guys are envisioning for that. Well, I think the, the hardest part in staging was the fact that it's two completely different yeah. sets. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when I was working at, I was looking at doing it, I went to my, um, my scenic designer 
And um, so I say, can you do this? And in the space that we're in, because we're in a really small space. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of limits what we can do anyway. And he looked at it for a while. He kind of groaned at me and then looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> my set designer is my husband, so you can see that <laughs> dynamic. Um, <laughs> so he, um, he sat down with his sketch pad and sketched some stuff out. And then he came back with the idea of um, you know, doing the way station first. Mm -hmm. And um, then what we'll do is we'll remove a lot of the set and then this, they swing in. Mm -hmm. So the back wall is going to swing in. Um, and he's thinking we're going to have trees attached to that back wall. Okay. So I'll all swing in as a unit. Okay. So we'll have trees scattered about. And then like an A-frame pulls in. That's an old broken down swing set. So um, there's a lot of movement on it. Okay. Um, and I love that. Um, going from two different time periods is fascinating because people move differently. And can, you know they talk differently, right. um, and there there's a, there's a, just a, a more of a naive, naivete to um, did I say that right? naivete you did. oh yeah <laughs> to um, people who are from earlier in the tw in the um, 20th century mm -hmm. than those who are now right. you know we move differently we talk differently we think differently yeah. so it's kind of a fascinating thing and watching these guys do it and correcting their um, modernisms <laughs> in the first play <laughs> and then you know embracing them in the second one yeah. so um but it's it's fascinating i love it yeah. i love it. you know it's like two two whole different shows yeah. in one in one it is and let's talk we're running out of time but about mm -hmm. south star for one minute uh just because it's like you said about the second american civil war mm -hmm. and if anyone's wondering there was not a second american civil war <laughs> yeah, really just to be clear yet. uh so what's it like getting to do a futuristic piece um of maybe future, well, not maybe future. I'm the not saying it's going to happen. Future. Not saying it's going to happen. Yeah. But, uh, you know, could happen, maybe, I don't know. What's it like doing a futuristic piece? Well, uh, Rebecca did a great job of leaving a lot of um, pieces untold. Uh, yeah. it's, it's fairly ambiguous. Uh, we've had a lot of great talks about um, maybe what led to it, um, coupled with the fact that, like, as an audience member, you're kind of trying to guess who these characters are and their relationships. Um, so it's really fun to kind of speculate those ideas um, and what led these characters to this point, um, their breaking points and their incentives. Right, as well as we've had lots of conversations about like, who's the bad guy? Mm -hmm. Is it is it my character and her side or is it these characters mm -hmm. and their side? Um, and think. that's been really interesting, yeah. you know. And politically Especially what? with a civil war. Um, where the you rebels know, were not the good guys. Are the rebels the good guys or the rebels the bad guys? Yeah, right. And is there a good guy? Is there a bad guy? Is there or ever? Is it just different viewpoints? And hopefully the audience can you know mm -hmm. find their own viewpoint on where they lean. Right. Um, right. So I think it lends itself to that. And then uh, since we have a little more time, talk about uh, Waystation and going from a futuristic piece to back in time, kind of that thing. Yeah, it's really fun. Uh, Waystation is really kind of timeless. It's at this train station and we're not quite sure where we are and that's where the kind of twilight zoney feel mm -hmm. comes in um and then all these characters are running from something and so it's dealing with that not wanting to admit what they're running from being in a room with strangers and stuck in a room with strangers mm -hmm. and how you deal with that and navigate that it's actually it's there there are aspects of it uh there are a lot like no exit by mm -hmm. by sartre um sartre if you prefer uh, and, and, you know, of, of these three strangers kind of coming together and having to confront one another um, and all being from very different backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it mysteriously. <laughs> well, it's, it's a bit uncomfortable yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the audience will feel that, but it's, it's fun to do as an actor yeah. and try to find that weird timelessness, but also they feel trapped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you. Uh, and if you guys want kind of a blast from the past and a futuristic, possible maybe, I don't know, outlook. Hopefully not. Uh, hopefully <laughs> not. Uh, then be sure to check out Waystation and South Star at Antoto 2 Theater Company and stick around because we have more fun and games coming up next. Hi, this is Wellington Webb former mayor of Denver, Colorado from 1991 to 2003. I was so pleased to receive an honorary doctorate from Metro State University. It's been a great highlight of my life. And I also want to take this opportunity to say happy birthday to you on your 50th anniversary. It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me.
on meals on wheel, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Discover a whole new world at Aladdin, the hit Broadway musical. USA Today calls it pure genius. It delivers a rush that will surprise you. The New York Times calls it fabulous and extravagant. And exactly what you wish for. Aladdin. Plays the Buell Theater April 7th through the 28th. Tickets at denvercenter.org or call 303-893-4100. All right, our game this week is a cinematic dream. Guess the movie. So how it works is we have three teams, and each team will compete to guess which movie is currently playing. The first team to guess four movies correct wins. All right? Does everyone feel like they understand? Yes. yes. Are we ready? Yes. yes. All right, let's take the first movie then, please. All right. I'm just blurb that when you got it. Magic Mike. Yeah, that was it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, one point for Team Fences. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. I don't know who that one went to. I feel like it was Over there, yeah. and total two. All right. <laughs> that was definitely Native Gardens. All right. All right. So it's currently the score is one, one, one. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for the next one? This is like a lot. Oh. Oh, 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 21 Jump Street. Street. 21 Jump Street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not Superman. <laughs> Different <laughs> genre for sure. Okay, next one. Good Will Hunting. Chasey and Amy? Good, Good Will Hunting. Good All right, so it's two, two, one. This is Robin Hood. Nope, it's Aristocats. Thousand Dalmatians. Did you say Aristocats? Mary Poppins. It is Mary Poppins. Oh. All right, so that puts us. Oh, we're going to try to No. Avengers. Avengers! Ah. All right, so I think it's three, two, one. Yeah. Oh, we're three. Okay, three, three, one. Okay. Woo. Same Friday Night Live! Same Friday Night That was Aunt Toto, too, for sure. Is that coming? Is that coming? All right. That was Same Friday Night Good. Next video. Manchester by the Manchester Sea. Yeah, that was it. Oh. Yes, <laughs> all right, so that's three oh, points three. all round. So oh, the right. next Tiebreaker. point Wait. wins. Wait. Are we ready? Okay. This is love, love. Love you. Crazy love. Crazy love. Crazy love. Crazy stupid love. Crazy stupid love is it? Yes. Did you say crazy super? I think she's Let's let's give one point to each. One point to each. Two winners. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So one more. Okay. Tiebreaker between Native Garden and Zanto 2. Are we ready? Right. Next video, please. Last one. The last one! That was the last for sure. All right. Oh, yeah, I See, I feel like that was easy. <laughs> Right? Okay. Perfect. Well, our winners are and Toto 2. They made an incredible comeback there. All right, congratulations. <laughs> Perfect. Congratulations, guys. Uh, and everyone else, be sure to stick around because when we come back, we're going to chat with the cast of Nada Gardens from the Denver Center Theater Company. Stick around. Welcome to Remote Denver. My name is Heather. I sound a bit artificial. Sorry, I am not human, but I will try to be your friend. 
and together we will move through some unseen parts of Denver. From the outside, we are a group, appearing and disappearing. On the inside, we are 50 individuals, creating a secret view of Denver. Do you trust me? Are you ready? Let's go. Final guests of the evening are the stars of the upcoming production of Native Gardens at the Denver Center Theater Company. So please welcome Jordan Baker and Mariana Fernandez. Hi. Hi, how are you ladies? Good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming down <laughs> across the street from the Denver Center yes, for us. Yes, yes. Uh, let's just start talking about Native Gardens. So what kind of is Native Gardens in your guys' words? Um, you know, it's a play that sort of poses the idea yeah. that uh, we should all be able to live next door to each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, no matter our sex, our race, our religion, or our, our gardening practices. Yes. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, with all the chaos and the conversation that's going on right now in our country, um, the beautiful thing about the play is that we kind of take on those topics in a pretty hardcore way, yeah. um, but with humor. Yeah. So we can still listen. So we're still listening to each other. Yeah. yeah. And this show, it's, it's so clever in the way that it's written with these two couples. Uh, you know, an older American and a young Latino couple that are living next door to each other. And even with their differences, the way that they, unbeknowingly, they insult each other, yeah. the, the microaggressions that happen yeah. that you, you know, you assume that you're right. Mm -hmm. And like Jordan said, when are you actually listening and taking in another point of view? And you get to see it on both sides of the fence. Yeah. And like you said, this is a humorous show. So although it deals with some, you know, current topics, it's a comedy. Yes. Um, kind of yeah. just about two people, two families, like you said, you know, and over a garden dispute, a border dispute mm -hmm. along it their gardens. Border dispute. Yeah, it's yes. a border dispute yeah, along yeah, the that gardens. Is exactly right. Uh, so talk more about your characters um, and who you play. Jordan, why don't we start with you? Um, on my side of the fence, um, my character is based on cultural privilege. Um, and even though my character has come from a blue collar background uh, in Buffalo, um, you know, I really, and, and being a woman um, who was good, obviously, as a child at, at mathematics um, and worked her way up through an education system that allowed her to get to become now a top executive at Lockheed Martin, um, I have to own the fact that um, uh, while I struggled maybe as a woman to get up through those, those um, levels, um, my skin helped me. There was a privilege yeah. there that I was white. And so um, I'm not owning that, that this went on, that anybody could have done what I did because I was poor and I made it to the top. Well, I'm not owning or being open to the idea that, well, not everybody gets the shots I get because there was something about my skin that allowed some doors to open. And so my character has to be willing to um, listen and maybe open the the door a little bit wider to sort of see what somebody else's experience truly was yeah. rather than judging it and assuming that they could have done what I did. We're all quite different. And no, it doesn't really work that way. There are some, some, how do you say, cultural issues going on that we don't want to admit that we actually participate in. Yeah. Mm. What about your character? Uh, I get to play Tanya, who is from a Native American background, mm -hmm. uh, and she is married to Pablo, who is a wealthy, grew up with privilege and money in Chile. So, you know, they're both minorities in the United States. And what I love about this character is that she's finishing her dissertation in anthropology and sociology studies of origins. And mm -hmm. there's a slide of when people claim them, when you stop, how you identify. So she's very well aware of all you know, the facets of people's privilege or where they come from, how they relate to other people. And so I think that she's very grounded in all of this and witnessing yeah. uh, how these characters relate. And also calling her husband out and like, yes, you are a minority, but at the same time, you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. So knowing those things. And so she has the strength to her and this, vis this vision, uh, but that being said, is also flawed and has her own uh, microaggressions that she tosses <laughs> onto her neighbors. So that's why it's yeah. fascinating to watch the different facets of these characters. Also, what's, what sets off the humor a bit yeah. is that um, we are real mama bears when it comes to our husbands <laughs> yeah. and what our husbands want and what we're willing to sort of swallow and kind of like, I'm going to get it done for you, baby. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that. Yeah. And, um, and the two of us actually probably would be great friends at the end of the day because yeah. <laughs> there's some things we really connect yeah. on. 
Uh, but that's the part that sort of starts to humor. The husbands want some things, and the women are like, don't worry, I'm going to get it for you. Yeah. We're going to take care of you. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah, I like it. Do it. Uh, talk more about those microaggressions that you were talking about that this play deals with, because I feel like that's relevant mm -hmm. in today. Of there's some things that, you know, people just don't know is insulting or, you know, to other cultures um, because they didn't come from that. So talk about getting to kind of portray those in a comedic light on stage. <laughs> I think the, one, the worst one that I have... <laughs> Uh, not to give too much away, but um, is a conversation that happens early on in the play where they've come to our garden, um, which is highly manicured, um, English gardening, and um, I guess you should explain native gardening, but, um, but anyways, they've come to our garden, and we have assumed that they're Mexican, like we've just defined it, like that's it, they are Mexican, but there's a wide range of where people come from in the world, yeah. and so they are educating us as how that is, and so it's how we throw it off, oh, you look so Mexican, oh, you must be Mexican, oh, you sound <laughs> like you're Mexican. And we love Mexico. We don't yeah. stop. <laughs> we love Mexico. Yeah. It's like it's so funny how it's done. You sort of see it like that's sort of what happens yeah. at the picnic barbecue, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that you have these automatic assumptions of, you know, I, I think I'm hyper or Tanya is hyper aware of like who these people are, trying to listen to them, their background, their stories. But then, uh, you know, there are these lines like I asked him, was like, do you listen to national public radio? Like, that would be something I hadn't heard of. Or yeah, yeah, clearly they're old, so you have no idea what this yeah, is. Exactly. Uh, and so it's those little comments like that that are just like... She thinks of us as Dick Van Dyke, you know, yeah. the Dick Van Dyke show. That's how she thinks of us. Yeah. Ageism comes up. Ageism and right. racism yeah. and classism and so all of these things that are not always super overt, yeah. that you don't get these like lashing out offensive but they're the undercutting, they're the ones that, exactly. like the digs. And we don't realize yeah. we're doing to each other. Yeah. Yeah. And what's yeah. it like to get to do a show where, you know, kind of addresses that to the audience, but in a, you know, a funny way. It's not, well, you know. You have to talk about native gardening, because we all kind of know what English gardening is. I think yeah. it's that, that manicured kind of controlling nature. Yeah. yeah. Um, but talk about that. Yeah, well, it, and that's the title of the show, right? It's uh, because here you are seeing two different couples on two sides of one fence, one with a very manicured European style, mm -hmm. gorgeous garden, and then I'm coming into this neighborhood and wanting to put in, like going back to the basics, the original, like how do we find these beautiful indigenous plants that can feed and be better for the environment. And the dispute and that we with would that. perceive as weeds. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that they're... It's just, weeds to us. We don't yeah. with them. Exactly. But she, you're talking more about how bugs and plants and the whole symmetry of how the cycle of how life works yeah. and that we should participate in that. And then we'd save water and we'd be better for the environment. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that whole conversation going on about how two people look at how they're just going to do yeah. their backyards. Mm -hmm. cool. And my last question for you guys before I let you guys go. What's it like getting to work in the space theater? Because um, it's a very interesting space and a very fun Well, we're space. moving in today. So. Moving in, okay. <laughs> oh, we have so been excited. in there. Um, we're going to have tech today. But um, I, it's one of the most beautiful spaces. I have to admit, this theater company, Denver, what, whatever the community here has put in to the Denver Center, it's my first time here. My husband was here last year doing The Christians. And... Um, it's just a first class organization. I just, as actors, we've said from the time we, before we even left our homes in New York to come here to do the show, um, everyone at that company just treats you like gold and they've thought so ahead of like, mm. what would be kind to us? And so that theater is a, it's a real gift that you've given your community and that you've spent time and, and put effort into it and, and stand by it because it's an extraordinary thing. It's not happening mm -hmm. in every single state in America. No. <laughs> it is a unique thing to Denver and to Colorado. Yeah. And I feel very lucky. I was able to be here two years ago and I remember how impressed I was not only by the amazing working environment, the people, but also, like you said, the community, the people that support the arts in Denver, how cultural the city is, yeah. how alive it is, all of that. Like Jordan said, not every city has this, you know, even coming from New York, like the, this idea of people like having this complex and so many forms of art are being supported in there. It's sure. just, it's amazing. Yeah, so it's Very been cool. exciting. It's been fun to be here. All right, perfect. Well, thank you guys both for coming down thank here you. and coming on. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, that's all the time we have for tonight's show. Uh, so be sure to check back in for all the latest in arts and entertainment coverage. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.